Taking a critical look at the gaming news of the week. This is Augmented Reality, presented by the Triple S League. Hey everybody, welcome to the Augmented Reality Podcast for today, February 3rd, 2021. It's a Wednesday and we welcome you all to the show. Thanks for joining us. Great to see so many active in the live chat. This is your source for news, leaks, and insights about games and the gaming industry. Uh, sorry for the late start. We're having a, a ridiculous technical issue for some odd reason on my preview stream. It's showing the top left quarter of the visual it's not showing the entire thing i i don't know tell me in the chat if if it looks like that or if it looks proper maybe it's just the preview that's that's a problem so uh anyway so that's why we were late to start i don't know if it uh yeah again like i said it's it's all messed up on my preview window so hope maybe it looks maybe it looks right on the uh, on the actual <laughs> on the actual live stream if you're watching on youtube if you're listening i suppose that does, doesn't matter all right Everyone's saying it looks good, so okay, I guess it's just my preview window. So I guess we're not having a, a, uh, yeah, it's, no, it's that not... was the same. Problem. That was the same problem I had when when we took over yeah. the stream and you were gone that one day, and and it was like driving me nuts because like you're going live, and suddenly it's like OBS is like yeah yeah just. It's not OBS though. It's OBS looks fine. It's when I when on my actual streaming dashboard, the preview window there is where it's messed up. Mm -hmm. uh, but apparently, everyone watching says it looks just fine, so that's good to know. All right, some interesting stuff to talk about today. As always, Mass Effect, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. We have some information on it now. We have more information than we had before, and uh, there is a preview. Uh, there's a an official reveal trailer that's uh, gone out. Plus. Bioware did a an event, a presentation with uh, some members of the media, and so we have some information from that. We have some comparison screenshots to show you, so that should be an interesting discussion. Lots of Mass Effect fans in our audience, um, and uh, I know, Saib, you have some strong opinions about this. I'm sure a lot of you will have strong opinions about this as well. We're also going to talk about Stadia and a couple of other things, some more IRL cyberpunk tech is coming into existence. It, it's been, I think it's, this is the fourth podcast in a row now where we're talking about some disturbing piece of cyberpunkish technology that's actually happening in the real world. It's, it's crazy. Mm. So yeah, this, this technology is like, this is like fringe science, right? This is like science that you were, that you would, think was completely like 10 years ago 20 years ago you would have been like oh yeah that's that's science fiction you wouldn't be expecting it to show up until like probably like 100 years down the road yeah you, you expect it to be 100 more. years down the road or so you expect it to be like, like this is far off in the future but no it's happening now yeah yeah so. um so that other voice you're hearing is of course Cybsidian, and i've totally butchered the intro because i was all frazzled by that tech issue but we also have moon tag with us uh how are you doing Hi, good. I've been really caught up with artwork for this, so yay, fun. Okay. And it's great to see so many of you joining us for the live stream. Please make sure to say hi in the chat. Send us your questions and comments there, too. We'll read and respond to as many as we can throughout. And as we get going, don't forget to slam that like button. It likes it rough. It tells us and YouTube that you appreciate this. For those listening after the fact on one of the audio-only platforms, we're glad to have you join us and grateful for your likes and follow. To get the latest info sooner, be sure to hit the link in the description below to subscribe to the Triple S League YouTube. Mm -hmm. Moon, you're cutting out a bit, so uh, you might want to adjust your microphone setup there. So let's talk back. Let's talk Mass Effect uh, right off the bat, then. So the Legendary Edition, the remastering of uh, the original trilogy, Mass Effect One through Three. We have known about this for a while. But we're actually getting some concrete info on it now. And as I said before, some members of the media were given a special presentation uh, from, you know, some uh, folks at Bioware, some folks working on this game. And so we have some interesting information about it. And I guess we'll just we'll just dive into You know what? Let's dive in. The, the, let's do the screenshots first just to take a look. So this is a full remaster of the, uh, the original uh, edition of... of Mass Effect 1 through 3, through, through, through 3. So, 
I've I've heard it. I've seen it described as as more than a remaster, but not a remake by any stretch. Now I I don't know that. I guess depends on your definition of a remaster. There's definitely some stuff that is uh, being changed and improved about it, especially the first game and especially the visuals, but also some gameplay stuff that we'll get into as well. Uh, I have so... a, I have a full list of basically everything that's been um, added, so I okay. can go through that whenever. Instead of yeah. So yeah. just kind of talking in generalities, we we actually have everything. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll go through some of the specifics here. Yeah, but, I have the specific list and exactly what everything it entails. So, so you can see on your screen right now, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see a uh, still shot from the original Mass Effect, and we're going to transition now to the Legendary Edition. So you can see definitely a graphical upgrade. Now, not as dramatic in this example as i was expecting i'll just go back to the except go back for, to the except original for lens flare yay so much lens flare hey. now guys it's going to be great it's like jr martin is sorry not jr martin um jj abrams sorry yeah. people just need to stop naming their artistic children jj um yeah but uh, jj martin would be uh, super super proud of this like absolutely like wow just lens <laughs> flare everywhere lens flare is the pinnacle of computer graphics Clearly. if you don't know this then then uh you, you're behind the times but yes that lens flare so yeah the the character definitely has more depth the face is not nearly as flat there's better lighting and shadows not quite as dramatic a transformation as what we're going to see in this next one here's another scene of the vehicle in uh, the original mass effect uh, I, I don't remember what part of this the, the game this is, but anyway. I do. I remember exactly where that is. That's I, just outside the outpost that you go to where they're suffering the plant problem and the, the, the Asari is turning green and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, she turned green later on, not not at the moment. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I remember exactly where that is. Like right around there, there's a little like cubby hole and yeah, it's cool. All right. Well, here's the same scene in the updated version. And as you can see, quite a dramatic improvement uh, the lighting the again more lens flare but the the scene so just looks way 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 better like if, if we go back to the original one now it just looks super super flat very very polygonous it's basically it's it's basically elon musk's uh, cyber truck you know kind of looking vehicle um now they've just improved it a, a ton that and the environment the lighting everything just dramatically better in this in this example so i'll leave this one up on the screen now looks much much better doesn't look next gen by any stretch or uh you know it even current gen really now the reason for that i think is because uh, they are making the remaster in unreal engine 3 still they talked about upgrading it to Unreal Engine 4. They had a meeting with uh, Epic about that, uh, the creators of the of the Unreal Engine. They opted to stick with uh, Unreal Engine 3, which is what the, the original Mass Effect trilogy was built on. And they did that because if they upgraded to 4, they'd have to rebuild significant parts of the game. They'd have to rebuild dialogue trees, plus they'd have to rebuild uh, things like certain scripted events and cutscenes and things like that. They can't just copy and paste the code over, apparently. It would have to be rewritten. And a lot of the argument for not doing that had to do with not wanting to lose out, lose sort of the magic of the original game. Now, up to you if you buy that argument or not, or if they were just looking to save on costs and effort. But they... They decided that that's the uh, that's the direction they should go, and there's yeah some specifics on that. Uh, lead environmental artist Kevin Meek says that if they had to, if they had opted to go with Unreal Engine four, the team would have had to completely remake elements like conversation trees. I had already mentioned that uh, a process that Meek describes as death by a thousand cuts. Mm hmm. Because again. This isn't a rebuild or no. a remake. This is just a a um, enhanced version, basically. Like mm -hmm. that, there is there is a handful, and I suspect that they're cherry picking the best of of everything. Like they they are really picking like the best 
things that, to showcase. They, they are going through and they are highlighting um, the things that they spent the most time on, the most you know uh, amount of energy and resources getting sharpened up. Again, I suspect this rebuild team is has a very is very 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 small. This is not something that a hundred employees worked on. Like not 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 all together. Sure, there was probably a hundred, at least a hundred employees were involved in this, if not way more. But a lot of those people only put in like you know a few hours here or there, essentially. Um, while the core team probably you know have probably been working on this for like probably at least two to three years. Um, uh, I, I would hazard a guess at, uh, probably since the, the last, you know, probably since Andromeda, I would imagine, um, there were some people like, you know, basically saying, okay, let's do a, let's do an enhanced version, right? A legendary version, because this is what this is, is they're packaging up the old game essentially as is with all the DLC and they're going to sell it back to you again. And again, this includes basically the, the majority of content that, that you're getting is stuff that many people who played Mass Effect, who played the trilogy, already owned in some level or capacity. I owned all of this stuff um, previously. Now, my original, uh, my original Mass Effect playthrough was actually on the, on the Xbox um, for Mass Effect 1. Uh, two I did on the PC and three I did on the PC. But number one was on my on my old Xbox account and that had all that had everything unlocked. Um, um, but yeah, we're not actually getting all of the DLC either. That's part of the first problem is that there is content that is missing from the original game. It's just one big DLC, but it is still a, a substantial one. So that's the Pinnacle Station DLC, and apparently yep. it is lost due to data corruption they lost the source code for it yeah so how you lose the source code for stuff is um shocking i mean it's not like they it's not like they they you know have i mean they did move buildings uh you know bioware edmonton did move buildings but how you don't have a physical safe at ea headquarters or you know several um where all the source data is like kept in a vault that is like, you know, tightly controlled and, 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 you know, it's just got everything that's in, in its original like hardware and, and everything like that. Like in, and some of the, some of the, uh, some of the original like computers and stuff that, that was used to like craft this stuff, like how you don't have that set up that way so that there's a, there's an actual room where, you know, you just like the get smart thing. You're like, dun, 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 dun. you're walking through like security door after security door after security door. And then you finally get into the ultra secret room and there's a dog there because the, you know, the back door was left open. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Every <laughs> development studio has space for that. I'm sure. Well, again, I don't expect that the average Joe station has that. Larian has a huge problem with their, buildings that they've been experiencing flooding almost constantly um which has slowed down their their next patch um their, their patch number four uh but just generally speaking like I, again i don't understand how big multi-billion dollar companies don't have a don't have an actual physical location where they've kept everything you know multiple copies or why they don't have two or three of those like if i'm a, if i've got a billion dollars in an, in a company i'm buying three properties that are really cheap that nobody knows that we actually own own and I'm putting like a giant vault there, you know, and, you know, hidden essentially and, and, and keeping it there. And just in case things go sideways, right? Like, like, I mean, I mean, you, you want that if, if all of you, and this is the, the thing that I've been warning about for ages. If your entire, if, if everything you do is on the cloud and the cloud goes down and you lose it, you lose everything. Like everything. Mm -hmm. Like I, I would again, if I if multi billion dollar company, I would have one person at each studio that's responsible for backing everything up onto terabyte drives every week, and probably having like I would say probably having at least at least eight weeks of of backups. So like you're you're transferring everything over from like you know that week that are, that everybody's done you know by friday everybody like packages up what they're doing or or you know the team leads have packaged up you know their 
their most important stuff. And they're sending that over in like raw files, physical files that you're walking over to a dude and you're handing it to him. And then he, that dude takes it and he puts that onto a, a, a safety backup drive. And then he puts that in like one or two physical locations that only he and the, you know, a couple of the bosses that have access to probably like, you know, a very high quality, very expensive safe somewhere in the building. Yes, I, I know. If you're wondering, hey, Saab sounds awful lot like, you know, maybe he's a Bond villain. You would be mostly right. Yes, yes, I would. You would be mostly correct in that. But yeah, I, again, I don't understand why, why this happens. Like, it, it's shocking to me that companies um, don't. Like, I know that there's some companies that get bogged down with, like, backups. Like, there's this one person who came in. They found 20 years worth of, like, records that were essentially, like, useless and pointless. And and they 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 went through the paperwork. They double-checked everything. They said, okay, there is absolutely no reason for us to be holding on to this stuff. It's an absolute waste of time, and it's taking up space. So they went to the boss and said, hey, um, I'd like to, your permission to just get rid of all of this stuff. It's all pointless information. We don't need any of this paperwork. He goes, yes, I agree. So he he signed off a thing. He had somebody from the uh, office copy everything, and then they destroyed the originals. Yeah, you heard me right. They went through the whole process of trying to figure out whether or not they needed to keep the stuff, and they copied it all, and then they got rid of the originals. It's like... (laughs) Okay, well, I... So, I I know, I know. Sort of slight digression there. So, anyways, um, this is is a remake. It's... or This is not a remake. This is a remaster. That's all this is. This isn't an upgraded engine. It's not running on on anything that's going to offer you enhanced performance. The the only thing that's giving you enhanced performance is the fact that everybody's running this on the new consoles and stuff. Yeah, the, the original, new, and and it'll have to be. I believe it said it'll have to run in uh in sort of the the toned down mode. Hang on a second. Where was that in this article? It, th- this is a game that was released in 2007. Yeah. 2007. And compatibility mode, that's what I was looking for. So uh, it it won't be available natively on next-gen consoles. It'll have to run in compatibility mode for the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. Yeah. Which, again, is not going to give you the... Cause, cause ma- I mean, yeah, Unreal Engine 3, it's pretty old at this point. It's the yeah. same engine that the original games were built in. So they're, yeah, obviously, yes, it'll, like you said, because everybody's running better hardware now, it will run a lot better and smoother, but there's going to be some issues with with the, the newer consoles. And so I guess that in itself raises the question of what's the longevity of this going to be? Like in 10 years, is is Unreal Engine 3 even going to be a viable thing to run games in, period? So, well, I mean, I mean it, it'll always run old stuff. But uh, again, this is this whole project is essentially a waste of time. Now, I, I, I'm going to put a caveat on that. So it's, it's it's essentially a waste of time. Now let's get into the, the nitty gritty of what they're actually bringing to the table. So what they're bringing to the table is going to be um, in scope aim shooting or sorry, aim, in scope aim smoothing. Uh, cover pass and AI improvements for for most of the uh, enemies that you're fighting. There were some enemies that were really really stupid, um, and some stuff that just kind of made the game like super easy mode. Even on the most difficult settings, I, I finished the game on the most difficult setting, the first one. And as far as difficult settings goes, it was like running molten core. And if you're not familiar with that, basically the number one rule that you have there is don't stand in fire. Uh, that's the one mechanic of the entire dungeon is just don't stand in fire. Like you just, just don't stand in the giant fire that's burning on the ground. And I know there was a lot of people that had a, an exceptionally difficult time with this. I mean, there were so many people who just couldn't grasp the concept of, you know, don't stand in fire, but the game was not difficult um, on the hardest level because you, you, like once you knew the mechanics of like, and these weren't advanced mechanics at all for the first game. It was very, very light mechanics. The third one, totally different, but first one, um, not, not hard at all. Uh, platinum on the third game was when you're doing platinum waves with your friends that took like skill and coordination and like timing and, you know, uh, and you could 
solo it, but it was very, very difficult. And you had to like rely on a lot of like gimmicky stuff, like, you know, one shots and sniper hits and stuff like that. So at any rate, uh, we've got uh, a completely rebalanced XP system. Um, so again, this isn't rebuilding the classes. This is just smoothing out the transition of the um, experience points and the level cap of level 60. Uh, more consistent auto saves, which again is like cool. That sounds like a patch note. Uh, actually, pretty much all of this stuff sounds like a patch note. <laughs> Improved boss encounters. Again, um, most of them weren't hard. It was like, you know, uh, take cover and then shoot when the guy isn't like firing a laser beam at you. Again, you know, not difficult. So that's the only thing that I'd say it like, huh, okay, well, that's interesting. Let's, let's see what that has to offer. You know, I'm not going to hold my breath, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll wait to judge that, you know, when we actually get it, uh, improve cooldown for first aid. Um, Again, I don't know what this means, like approved cooldown for first aid. I think what they're trying to say suggest with this is that the combat experience has just been increased and smoothed out and made a little bit better. Unified, maybe, maybe, maybe a game. shorter period of time, but between uh, your uses of first aid. That's what yeah. that sounds like to me. I guess. And then unified mini games across platforms. Again, okay. That's that's fine, I guess. Um, they, they have gone with some changes to some of the, uh, the override systems and the, or AKA the hacking system. Um, that seems great. Uh, yeah. So overall, that's essentially between that and the, the graphics, they're not really bringing anything new to the table other than, um, better tone mapping, better anti-alias, volumetrics um, and fog field of uh, uh, depth of field and bloom um, you know more broken depth of field stuff subsurface scattering ambulant you know um, uh, visual aid stuff like that and again this is like this is just stuff that came along since the game hadn't mm -hmm. been there but essentially what, what? All no this... ray tracing you mean yeah. you mean ue3 is not capable of that come on yeah, but essentially all this means is that we're getting a game that that the first one is going to be the most differences. It's going to be the most thing that's caught up with stuff, you know, with with stuff today. But Mass Effect 3 is basically the same game with just more textures and more like um even number 2. Number 2 and number 3 are both just going to have like 4K textures and a little bit of better smoothing out of some of the the meshes and then that's yeah it. and some gameplay tweaks like you talked about they improved the cameras to the camera following of the character the textures though ai upscaled uh sometimes as much as 16 times but the they they ai upscaled the textures so they didn't even remake the textures then they they went in and tweaked things now i don't know what they did with the the models if they upscaled or uh, you know, improved the the resolution of of those in any way, but that's that's an interesting thing for better or for worse. Uh, you know, they they that that's definitely an efficient way to do it. Uh, what's the quality going to be like? I, I mean, we'll have to wait and see, I suppose. Uh, they also, I mean, there's just some some other quality of life things like the redesigned uh, female shepherd from Mass Effect Three that her her new design will run through all three games now but let's talk about the big thing that's not going to be there the multiplayer for mass effect 3 so they they made the decision to not include multiplayer basically uh, basically for budget reasons or, or t you know uh, for scope reasons uh, it's not going to be sorry just trying to look for the quote here so it just when they when they define the scope of the project, Mass Effect multiplayer fell outside of their scope, and uh, the quote on this is I think it's uh, it's kind of this this is in the midst of a of a of a presentation, so it's referring back to previous stuff. Uh, Walter says, I think it's kind of what Kevin was getting at, but ask, getting at before and asking where you draw the line. I could really imagine us trying to chase the magic 
the first game had. Uh, sorry, I'm totally reading from the wrong part. No wonder I, no wonder I couldn't find what I was looking for. Well, there is a comment from Tara Kate in the chat. Sure, go ahead and read that while I try and get my brain together here. <laughs> Yeah, they do at least have a universal creator, a uh, character creator this time across all three games, so that makes up for them breaking the first, uh, breaking the one first time around and never fixing it. <laughs> hmm. Well, there you go. And then from Funky Moin, if you want to see a fantastic remake remaster, take a look at Demon's Souls 2009 versus 2021. Mm-hmm. I'm not familiar with that one, but C Creature Kobe responded that it is a full remake, not a remaster. Right. Um, so when it came to the uh, when it came to the multiplayer in the Legendary Edition, uh, they said that the decision to leave it out was ultimately a matter of knowing where to draw the line. Uh, there would be expectations for the multiplayer now that are sort of things that are commonplace. For example, cross-play, things like that. That would, that would, uh, I mean, be a, a very difficult challenge to include. So, also, what do you do with all the people who are still playing the multiplayer now? You know, how do you bring them in? How do you bridge the gap between uh, that and the new project? Uh so not not something not things that are insurmountable, but they they decided it wasn't worth the effort. Basically, now, um, Cyber, your reaction to this was kind of you know what were they thinking? So uh, why don't you explain that? Okay, did we lose Cybe? Um, oh, Cybe had to step away. Oh, for we a moment. did. Yes. Okay. I apologize for that. So, uh, That's okay. oh man, you can you can definitely see the duct tape on this uh, <laughs> on this presentation today, on our on our show today. Uh, all right, let's read some of the some of the comments here. So, uh, Funky Moin says uh, the the good thing about Unreal Engine three is that modders will have a blast tweaking it. I mean, there you go. So, uh, modding definitely something that is uh, going to be that could potentially be big with this if you're into that. Uh, oh, another thing I like, those elevator rides going to be a lot shorter, and apparently they're skippable now, so that's that's awesome, and, and hopefully, they, you know what drove me crazy was when they'd put an elevator ride, no, it wasn't an elevator ride, uh, there was one part of the original Mass Effect where they put a, they put a long, unskippable cutscene right before a boss fight, and if you, if, if you, lo if you died in the boss fight, it would put you back before the cutscene, before the cinematic. Drove me crazy. Oh no! Uh, oh no! So hopefully that, stuff like that's that. That's always been... unfortunate. That's always bad. Yeah. Mm. Creature Kobe says it is definitely not a remake. It is a remaster through and through. Absolutely. Uh, Creature Kobe also says it is made to build hype for Mass Effect Four. I mean, could very well be. They did announce. Uh, they did announce or tease us with Mass Effect 4, uh, at least another you know, upcoming Mass Effect, uh, just n just fairly recently, so the timing is conspicuous there. Is it a cash grab? Oh, good. I mean, yeah, you could definitely accuse it of being a cash grab. Uh, as, I mean... As I suppose you can with most remakes and remasters, but in this case, yeah, since they're they're not, uh, it does seem like they're putting in the minimum effort, uh, the minimum effort required. So, yeah, it seems like really they're trying to do something with semantics now and working with just what they have made, like. Mm -hmm. You know, why Why bother making a new game with all these things that the community is suggesting, asking for, mm -hmm. or inquiring about even, right? All right, let's see. Um, there was a comment about the multiplayer. Oh, Citadel Power. So, no... A good place to meditate. Mm -hmm. Dorian Gray says... Uh, 
no one really plays Mass Effect for the multiplayer. And I think that that was part of it too that factored into their discussion. They said their their focus and really what people play the original games for for the most part, for the majority of people, it's uh, that single player experience. So that was their focus. I suppose it's an it's an understandable omission at that point. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, basically it's like it's like they they're admitting that I mean, in one hand they're admitting that the multiplayer is not that popular, but in the other hand, I think they're also admitting that they don't expect or want people to be playing the multiplayer, which again is kind of dumb. Um the multiplayer is is always something that that there was a big community there for it back when the game was just out and it was you know it was it was up you know two and three had really good stuff really cool mechanics um i remember a lot of those maps and a lot of those missions and and the the and it it was fun it was a little on the rough side as far as like you know pro multiplayer goes but i think that if they had continued to like focus on it and improve it I mean, I would have preferred that than than what we have in essentially uh, Fortnite right now. Like, I, I really would. Hmm. I would prefer there to be a, a Mass Effect multiplayer map thing where it's no story; it's just multiplayer stuff and content and new new things. And and I would enjoy it for that. But it's just not there. Same thing with um, with and and they had the, kind of the same problem with with Andromeda, partially because of how terrible it was, and then they stopped supporting it right away, and the multiplayer went away. It was like the game had decent multiplayer and there was times where the multiplayer could be really, really fun and engaging, but uh, we just don't have that anymore because, eh, you know, why bother? Mm -hmm. Is essentially what kind of it boils down to, I feel. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel that that's a horrible mistake. I I really, really feel that they really, really dropped the ball on this. They could have done so much more, like, cool stuff. They could have done so much more interacting interesting mechanics and and everything but they didn't because you know it's just easier to do you know whatever this is you know so it's it's kind of uh it's kind of insulting kind of like sad it's it's, it's extremely sad and depressing but you know whatever i guess Mm -hmm. um so the, but yeah, the so multiplayer. The, I am I am bummed out about there being no multiplayer. That was the one thing that I was kind of hoping that they would have like taken back to the board and and reworked. Um, but again, I and I've been saying this for a while. It's like you don't, you do not, for the love of God, you do not hope and cross your fingers that that anything that this company is doing with anything that you love is going to be done is going to be done in a respectful manner. Just like like you just absolutely hold don't don't hold your breath because the chances of it you know being a complete like just absolute wreck is highly likely it's so sad oh so sad Mm -hmm. but yeah no it's it's pathetic it's a a, this is this is very much a pathetic um yeah this is very much a pathetic attempt at, at making this this an actually good game um and and again this is really 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 sad but uh now overall i would say that if you had a friend who had always heard about the mass effect game and kind of felt like this is something that they wanted to try out i would recommend getting them this thing as long as it's not over like a hundred and yeah as long as it's not over a hundred bucks i would actually recommend that anybody who hasn't played mass effect as a whole with all of the dlc and all of the stuff and has the time and the energy to go through it properly this is a good buy for them. This is not a good buy if you have done this before. The only reason why you pick this up is nostalgia's sake. Um, uh, you know, that and maybe mods. It, like, if the modding really, really comes out and hits this game pretty hard, and we start getting, like, new content, um, might be tempting. There's some really amazing modding content that's coming out for um, Fallout New Vegas still to this day. So I would... I would again. I would really, really recommend that you pick this up only for um, a handful of people that haven't played this before, and if you're interested in like modding and modding content, uh, then I would recommend picking this up. I don't think that the average player needs to get into this, but I definitely think that if somebody hasn't ever played through it, 
um, that there's definitely room there to pick it up, get it, and experience it as a whole story. It's a whole brand new story. I really think that this is actually a good idea. Um, but other than that, I'm very disappointed. All right. There was a question earlier in the chat. Will the voiceovers be redone? No. no. They are keeping the original voice lines. They're they're really they're not redoing anything as far as yeah, the they, uh, the acting and the yeah. animation stuff like that. At least I I didn't I didn't read any in what I read on it. I didn't read anything about them improving animations. They're one of the reasons they stuck with Matt, uh, Unreal Engine three was that they wanted to not have to rebuild certain things and re recode all the scripting for events and things like that. So mm-hmm. I. Th- I, I don't think we'll see many improvements there. It's going to be a visual upgrade with some minor tweaks and improvements, basically. So that's what that's what you can expect. It's like, I mean, it, it, in a way, it almost sounds like if you take the original Skyrim and then go get the top 10 Skyrim mods available on the Nexus and install them all, it seems like it's that degree of, of upgrade, maybe even less than that. <laughs> Oh dear. Skyrim's got animation improvements. It's got mesh improvements. It's got there. Uh, there is some things. minor in VR. Uh, yeah, about uh, animation, real quick. There is a small upgrade to existing animations. Okay. So they at least did that, but it's not a lot. It is a handful of, of conversational animations where it looked a little weird. That's what they fixed. They did not fix a lot of the other more jankier stuff they didn't smooth things out they didn't add new stuff you're still going to have like that standard like guys talking to you then he kind of shuffles side to side then he crosses his arms and he does that just like every other npc you talk to does everybody has the exact same way that they fidget and then cross their arms it is absolutely done to death and I, I mean, I know why, like obviously technical limitations, but it's still, it's still kind of funny. It's like, um, uh, Viva Dirt League put out a video this morning, which was really, really, really funny about like, you know, the players playing this experience and, um, there's a guy doing this like epic pump up for the general who's about to come and do this big talk. And, and the, the, the player's like, Oh yeah, this is going to be cool. This is going to be, and then the guy walks out and he's like, Oh no, not this actor again. And the actor just does this dry dry line delivery that has no emotion behind it or has like random bits of like inflections that don't match the rest of what he's saying and it's like there's not a lot of that in mass effect it's very little of it their voice work for the most part um for most of the main actors is done really really well and they have a lot of um secondary characters a lot of side characters a lot of npcs and stuff like that that also have pretty good lines and stuff, but it would have been nice to get more, which is what we were hoping for when they had that mass effect, like um, the big, like they brought all the original voice actors back and they had them all, you know, in this thing and they were all talking and, and talking about how cool the project was. We were hoping there was this slim sliver of hope that they were actually going to like put more, some more content in there, maybe lead up, you know, to, you know, mass effect Four. maybe deliver a new DLC, at the end of the game that comes free, that's hidden, that if you play all the way through all of the games in proper order and you do all of the stuff, then on hard, you get the super secret ending that nobody's ever seen before. And this was totally brand new, was not a, was not expected. And they just put the game out there, didn't say a word about it, and just waited until people discovered it. And then people discovered it and started to lose their minds. You know, and this would come out like a week or two after where people were literally like, guys, 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 oh my God, oh my God, there, there's a new ending. Oh, and people are losing their minds and everybody's going nuts. And and this was actually a trailer for the next thing that was coming out. And and we would see, you know, where that was. But no, the, the perfect opportunity missed. What? Terrible. Just terrible. Well, it, how do we know that's not there? Well, again, <laughs> maybe it is. Could there but be? I, I mean, it, but I kind of doubt it. We have, I mean, from as far as we know right now, there's no changes to the ending. Yeah. A, could they slip a secret in there? Well, I suppose. Maybe. We'd be pleasantly surprised. I'm not holding my breath for that. I just want to end on this topic on this message from Terror K. The comparisons between... Eden Prime alone show how the people making this don't respect or understand 
the original game. And you know what? The the people that that made the original game are largely just not there at Bioware anymore. So it's, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, you can't say for for a, a however many person team. I mean, it, I I wouldn't want to make a blanket statement saying they don't respect the original IP, but I don't think that EA does. I think from EA's perspective, it's just yes, make this get us money. You know, make it shiny. Put in lens flares. I mean, the what's with all the lens flares? Like in some, like why I've never understood this about video games. Why are you trying to make it look like there's actually a camera in the scene? That's what I've never understood. If maybe you've got like in in Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, it works for me because you have you you know you have a cybernetic eye and it, it kind of works but in most other games it's like why uh you know the motion blur the the uh lens flares the, all of these effects that are are you know that they are a result of using a camera to f- to film movies and that's why they look like that is cuz you're using a camera uh, and they want to port all these into video games and make it look like you're actually looking through a camera I that I don't get that. It's like remove the remove that middleman. Like we we don't have a camera. It's a virtual environment. You have a virtual camera. Why are we trying to make it look like a real camera instead of a human eye? So there's my mini rant for the day. You are listening to the Augmented Reality Podcast, and I just oh, my head is spinning. I I do feel uh, bad about all of the the hiccups today. But anyway, thank you for sticking with us. Uh, we really appreciate you all being here, and if you want to keep the conversation going after the live broadcast, we welcome you to join our Discord community. You can find the link in the description below. It's a place where you can chat with us and other Triple S League community members about all the things we love to talk about. Stay up to date about everything we're doing here at the Triple S League. Click the link below to join. Be sure to say hi to us in the welcome channel. And uh, while I say this next bit, I'm going to actually uh, put up the... Yeah, so I'm going to put up the image of the merch here. Some original merch artwork done by Moontag. And um, also just want to let you know that things are going to start looking a little different on our YouTube channel over the next little while. Um, actually, our current our, our YouTube channel is probably not going to change all that much. But uh, sometime within the next two to three weeks, uh, this podcast will be moving to a different channel. We'll start. We're going to keep going with it. Like uh, the t- the times may change. We're still discussing things like that, but due to things going on with YouTube, not really liking mixed content anymore. We're trying to separate out the different kinds of content we do, but the main channel can still be a central place uh, where where you'll find announcements about you know all of when we post things on other channels and that kind of a thing. We uh, appreciate. You all sticking with us as we transition and try to, you know, change up what we're doing to better accommodate how YouTube and other platforms and the internet in general is working these days. Mm -hmm. Uh, Of course, uh, the biggest sort of central location that our community uh, gathers around is the Discord server now. It's not even all about the YouTube channel anymore. And so, you know, we'll have all of the updates uh, there for everything you need to know about where to find any of our content we you know we don't want to spread things out too much but we have to diversify a bit or we're not going to survive uh the next yeah. uh, couple of years online as uh, the triple s league that's becoming very very apparent and so we are looking at our options and and what are we going to do to you know remain uh because yeah we have to we have to remain viable and relevant in YouTube's eyes, which is not always the same thing as, you know, you know, what our, what our viewers think is viable and relevant. So go figure. We're just chasing after their algorithm and the changes they're making is, is it's very difficult. It's very difficult, but anyway, we will let you know of everything that's going on. There will be a new channel for the podcasts. So uh, that's all I'll say about it right now, but there yeah. will still be well, a lot of content coming on this channel, but it'll be yeah. more pre-edited uh, stuff, the guides, when, the, the reviews, things like that. 
yeah more more of the pre-edited content we're going to be doing uh some more stuff we're going to be trying to keep up with some more series some more like stuff we'll have like editorials here uh as well and some clips from the podcast but we're going to move the podcast over because um the the algorithm doesn't like it when you stream on a channel and also do edited content they really just don't like that unless your content covers one specifically one thing period so if you're covering like a game you you cover like you know call of duty then if your channel is nothing about call of duty period and only call of duty that's fine some people can get away with doing like like two different types of games that are very very similar but even that tends to hurt you so um so yeah this is a big change that we're gonna we're being forced essentially forced to do mm-hmm. um <clears throat> the other the new channel will become a little bit more uh news heavy and we'll have more like short news updates short mini streams that kind of stuff uh where we just cover like news and news topics um while this channel remains to be mostly like pre-edited content and, so, and that might be uh, yeah, i mean that might be good for for you out there listening too, I mean, if if you're yeah. more only interested in the news stuff, then you know, maybe you're subscribed if, over there. And then mm-hmm. you know, if but if you like the um, the reviews, the uh, the guides, and things like that, so separating everything no, out, we'll, we yeah. don't need to go into all the details right now. We're we're still hammering. Yeah, some as things far out, but... as far as um, as far as people like doing the subscribe, like the the you know the join button thing. Um, that that helps us out and giving us super chats and that kind of stuff. We are going to hopefully find a way to give you uh, similar abilities on both channels without you actually needing to pay for both channels. Um, So we're going to look into things like that. Uh, We are increasing our rewards for people who are helping us out financially, uh, which includes custom avatars and custom uh, bits of art that uh, Moon is working on. Um, Moon, do you want to say anything about that? Because it's it's coming along like really, really coolly. Like we've gotten one thing done for one of our members and we're working on more stuff. So it's it's nothing that's being promised yet, but we're we are starting the process. Mm -hmm. Yes. So like. Uh, as I'm making d- uh, these avatars, I want to have a whole bunch done first to show uh, a slight variety in styles that I can do. Because do like chibi art, semi chibi art, or like half body, full body figure kind of. You know, hit us up, check out our page, see what we can do. I'll be posting more in the Discord as well. And there's also another one of our members of the community, Sword Sister, who's said uh she'll be posting more reference materials because she's also also upgrading her skills as well and it, it's going to be so cool so fun yeah, we're still getting you're still breaking up a little bit but yeah, you want to um, ad- yeah. adjust your sensitivity slider there moon yeah probably um, okay. needs to probably needs to come down because you're, you're you're it's clipping out a lot of stuff but um yeah so anyways we've got we've got stuff coming out of that so all right let's hit a couple of these news topics real fast um the the fastest one is um you know that wonderful bit in south park where cartman goes to the head of ea and starts to wonder about uh you know purchasing certain um lifelong uh I, I don't know a way to phrase this without getting in trouble just he goes to the office he's like oh i would love to, i would Good dasha. No, I'm I'm doing the wrong voice. Um, southern accent. Uh, fried chicken, that kind of stuff. Um, where he comes out and he's all like, "Hey, yes, I'm from Southern Alabama, and I'm wondering if I could buy some people from you." That kind of thing. I really can't. I don't know why I can't do it right now, but I can't do it. It's really funny. Probably one of the funniest scenes because it's true. Because EA did use the likeness, copyrighted people's likenesses, copyrighted. Um, in some cases, their voices, and then took those rights and gave them absolutely nothing for it. So if you're wondering what I'm talking about, EA is bringing back... Sli- oh, sorry, not that, not not the S word. Um, you know, uh, uh, college sports. That's right, college sports. Not, not the other, you know, thing, but college sports. But this time, without the um, indentured servitude of, you know, large groups of people. Um, By this time, they're not bringing in real players. They're going to be bringing in fake players who are playing for fake teams. Well, real 
teams like the, the the real the teams are real in the fact that they're actually the teams of the colleges they're paying the colleges that but what they're not paying them is they're not you know giving any money to the to the people who play on those teams right because again you know it's like uh it's like uh right, but they're not using their likenesses anymore yes yeah but this does mean that we are about to see a whole wide variety of people who don't exist, who play this, who are going to be like the main characters of this game. So that's going to be interesting. And I don't know if this is funny or if this is sad or what this is. I, I just know that it's kind of like, huh, all right, okay. <laughs> like, like, sure. Well, it's going you, to be interesting, you, you, you I guess. You said it was, a, it was kind of criticism worthy that they were using the likenesses of these college athletes without giving them mm -hmm. any compensation. Now they're just making fake athletes instead yeah. that i mean that seems like a step up well i i would think so but uh i kind of like it's it's really it's kind of weird it's kind of weird and i it, it's it's weird let's just leave it at that it's bizarre um this okay. whole scenario is is kind of wonky and basically <clears throat> uh basically i think that it it just it, i mean what it really shows is that ea was just never interested in in partnering up with actual people before and they just wanted you know what they could get from yeah so they, so they just wanted not willing to pay for, for the, yeah, they'd rather they just use not, fake people than yeah compensate exactly. an actual athlete for their likeness yeah, yeah okay. and instead of instead of coming up with some kind of a system and again this is hilariously bad because it's not like you could you know, it's not like there's this thing where you can give money to students for education and then you both essentially get to write that off as a, a tax-free thing. I mean, it's not like that actually exists in which EA could have just taken huge amounts of money and just given them away to people as a form of helping them to continue their education. It's not like that would have helped, you know, an entire generation of athletes. Um, no, no. Instead, they got to do it this way. Mm. Again, again, it's it's messy. It's weird. Um, but yeah, funny, funny nonetheless, if you uh, refer back to the old South Park stuff. Um, hmm. But yeah, so so we're going to see where that goes. So uh, Google Stadia is dying um, and it's it like it's legitimately dying. Google Stadia is basically on its way out and it's on its way out primarily because of things that we're seeing now with them selling off uh, certain bits of the infrastructure or the technology used to run their Thing. So they, they recently, a um, lot of Google started to approach high level companies and started to offer them the um, hardware and software behind studio, uh, Stadia. So copies of it, essentially, not, not actually like not the actual Stadia servers, but just their infrastructure, like planning and that kind of stuff. So you're saying, well, why does this mean this is the end of it? Because nobody does this with a product that they're still selling. Nobody does this with a product that they continue are that they are planning on continuing to sell. So this is this is uh, this is where where we're at. Basically, Stadia is going to die probably over the next uh, year or two. It'll slowly be phased out until they just drop it from their services and stop talking about it altogether. Um, there are dozens of other streaming software tech that has been um that has really like um that has really like taken off and is a lot better than what they have to offer <clears throat> in most of those cases it's also a lot cheaper um so unless there's a big partnership here between them and i don't know a company that maybe doesn't have a streaming platform uh who wants to get it and wants to integrate it um i th i don't think we're gonna like i think we're seeing the beginning of the end for stadia so this this is um, this is a signal. It's kind of like one of those things where it's like if you're looking at the markets and you're watching things, you know, closely, you see this and you know it's time to like, oh yeah, that that's the end of that company. So well, you, I you also need to mention here that they they shut down their in-house game studios, mm -hmm. like done, they're gone. Yeah. Uh, now they they say that they are refocusing on turning Stadia into a streaming service for third-party titles. So obviously this uh, this this plan of offering in-house content, offering their own you know custom exclusives, if you will, obviously that they they don't see that plan working uh, long term. So 
they they've shut that down. But mm-hmm. I mean, they, they, it seems like so. I don't know. Do you think this streamlined model might be more successful? Has do we have any stats on how many people are actually using Stadia or that's how that's changed since it uh, since it launched? Um, no, the, they, they keep those pretty close to the chest. And we know that, I mean, we do know that just generally very, very few people are actually talking about it. Um, it was handy for cyberpunk if you didn't have like, you know, really, really good technology to run it on. Um, it was definitely a solution, but you you wouldn't run this on your phone, you know, on a mobile network because it, you, you like just a few hours and you're up to like 10 gigs. Like that's ridiculous. You know, and yeah, so it's just, it's just not a, it's not a system that's working the way that it, I think they were intending or hoping that it would work. And yeah, so this is, this is out. Okay. This is is the end for sure. And one final thing, uh, Elon, Elon Musk did something with a monkey. Uh, You might want to elaborate on that. So Elon Musk put in a, um, has announced, this is his, uh, his, um, oh dear, I forgot the name of it. This is his uh, Neuralink company. So this is his Neuralink company has put a chip into a monkey's head that has allowed the monkey to interact with a video game with his mind alone. So with just looking at the screen, apparently i'm going to assume there's a screen involved uh the monkey was able to control something on the screen and i wouldn't say that it was a game i don't think he was playing cod i don't think he was playing Fortnite. i it, think it was probably the, some very simple thing programmed it was, for it, a monkey it was a yes it was a very simple thing where um they trained him to use some kind of a control to hit the green button to make the screen go green or to use a mouse to make the thing go across the screen to click the green button that would then provide a banana. And he really liked the banana, so they did this for months and months and months. And then they gave him the, uh, they put him under, they gave him the implant, and then they put him in the room. He no longer had the control. But he would look at the screen, and he would want green, and he could realize that he was moving the thing and that it was you know, hovering over the thing. And then, you know, that in, that caused the interaction that then provided him with the banana. I'm going to guess wildly that that was kind of more or less what they did. Um, so so and, you just kind of made that up, but it's... it's Yes, that that, yeah. that is complete I mean, speculation. That's a, that because, sounds completely viable. Okay. I mean, they have... Yeah. They, yeah. There, have been, there have been experiments where they've taught yeah. animals to play video games. Now, they before, have not... But, yes, but the, this, the, the, reason the why, new aspect is, is of course... The ch- using the chip in the brain to control yes. it. And and again, this is the reason why I'm speculating on this and why this is speculation is they have not announced how the project actually went. And I doubt until they um until they get as much information out of it as they want, they're not going to go public with the with the actual tests, with the actual programs, with the actual tools, because this is a very, very, very like um fringe and also like highly competitive field. So they're not going to be putting out their information on exactly how they did this stuff until they're looking for like a wave of new investors or they're looking to satisfy current investors or they're looking to make some kind of announcement where they're looking for more partner programs, that kind of stuff. So they're, they're not going to showcase this just yet, right? Like the 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 test that they did on the pigs with brain chips, um, that, that was obviously structured to be you know, to be um, brought out at a particular time so they, they could kind of showcase this stuff uh, to the public and showcase what they were doing. And that was actually a new wave of like allowing more people into the program so that they could get more experience and that they could start to recruit, you know, people that are skilled in the field so that they could start to push this more into different directions. So this is a, this is a great sign and a great, this is great news because this is the the first chance that we're, we are seeing a, a potential like um, full dive tech that's starting to to work. Uh, and at some point, this will lead, like this is the first steps towards that process. This is the first steps towards, um, Moon, You, I know you were excited for this, uh, Log Horizon season three. This is our first chance that we're, we're moving in this direction, guys. Oh my we're God. moving. In- we're moving in this direction. Soon no, no, we'll be. No, wait a minute. Like what? What we talked about? What we talked about? Gabe wanting to do this. 
Gabe Newell when we were talking about that on the previous episode of the podcast. That seemed really scary, but now you sound excited about it. I don't know. I, I have always been excited for this. I cannot wait until I can fully transfer my consciousness into a gigantic spaceship. Okay, well, I mean, you're, you're just... skipping a few steps there. Skipping a few steps. My, but maybe, anyway. But this is, this is just <laughs> the beginning. Like... I like JC Grease's comment here. Uh, Let the monkey play cyberpunk. Here's a question for you. If you have, um, if you have a million monkeys playing a million copies of Cyberpunk 2077 for a million years, um, will they eventually find the secret ending? And with that, we'll wrap up the show. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us for today's show, the Augmented Reality Podcast. Thank you for everyone who supports the show by listening live or after the fact. Don't forget to slam that like button before you leave. If you haven't yet, we really appreciate appreciate that. Special thank you to our Patreon supporters and channel members who help to make this content possible. Robin, Shua, Time Bean, Schoolman, Lady Reaver, Draco Den, Niv, Two Tall Twelve, Atomic Stew, and our members on YouTube, Jer Schultz, Game Notes, and Terra K. We appreciate you all very much, especially in this time of some uncertainty. Um, and uh, we thank you for being active in the community. Check out the Discord community, too. This is a presentation of the Triple S League. Check out our YouTube channel for game guides, reviews, comedy, news updates, and tons more quality gaming content. My name is Ash. On behalf of Cybe and Moontag, I thank you all so much for listening, and we'll talk to you again very soon. <laughs>